These are the words that Moses spoke to all Israel across the Jordan in the wilderness, in the Araba opposite Suf, between Paran and Tophel, Laban, Hazroth, and Dizahab. It is eleven days' journey from Horeb by way of Mount Seir to Kadesh Barnea. In the fortieth year, on the first day of the eleventh month, Moses spoke to the sons of Israel, in accordance with everything that the Lord had commanded him to declare to them. After he had defeated Sion the king of the Amorites, who lived in Heshbon, and Oji the king of Bashan, who lived in Ashtaroth and in Edrei. Across the Jordan in the land of Moab, Moses began to explain this law, saying, The Lord our God spoke to us at Horeb, saying, You have stayed long enough at this mountain. Seven turn and set out on your journey, and go to the hill country of the Amorites, and to all their neighbors in the Arabah, in the hill country, in the lowland, in the Negev, by the sea coast, the land of the Canaanites, and Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates. See, I have placed the land before you, go in and take possession of the land which the Lord swore to give to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, and their descendants after them. And I spoke to you at that time, saying, I am not able to endure you alone. The Lord your God has multiplied you, and behold, you are this day like the stars of heaven in number. May the Lord, the God of your fathers increase you a thousand times more than you are, and bless you, just as he has promised you. How can I alone endure the burden and weight of you and your strife? Obtain for yourselves men who are wise, discerning, and informed from your tribes, and I will appoint them as your heads. And you answered me and said, The thing which you have said to do is good. So I took the heads of your tribes, wise and informed men, and appointed them as heads over you, commanders of thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens, and officers for your tribes. Then I ordered your judges at that time, saying, Hear the cases between your fellow countrymen and judge righteously between a person and his fellow countrymen, or the stranger who is with him. You are not to show partiality in judgment, you shall hear the small and the great alike. You are not to be afraid of any person, for the judgment is God's. The case that is too difficult for you, you shall bring to me, and I will hear it. At that time I commanded you all the things that you were to do. Then we set out from Horeb, and went through all that great and terrible wilderness that you saw on the way to the hill country of the Amorites, just as the Lord our God had commanded us, and we came to Kadesh Barnea. And I said to you, You have come to the hill country of the Amorites, which the Lord our God is about to give us. See, the Lord your God has placed the land before you, go up, take possession, just as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has spoken to you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Then all of you approached me and said, Let us send men ahead of us, so that they may spy out the land for us, and bring back to us word of the way by which we should go up, and the cities which we should enter. The plan pleased me, and I took twelve of your men, one man for each tribe. Then they turned and went up into the hill country, and came to the valley of Eshkol, and spied it out. And they took some of the fruit of the land in their hands and brought it down to us. They also brought us back a report and said, The land that the Lord our God is about to give us is good. Yet you were unwilling to go up, instead you rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. And you grumbled in your tents and said, Because the Lord hates us, he has brought us out of the land of Egypt, to hand us over to the Amorites to destroy us. Where can we go up? Our brothers have made our hearts melt, by saying, The people are bigger and taller than we, the cities are large and fortified up to heaven. And besides, we saw the sons of the Anakim there. But I said to you, 
do not be terrified, nor fear them. The Lord your God, who goes before you, will himself fight for you, just as he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. And in the wilderness where you saw how the Lord your God carried you, just as a man carries his son, on all of the road which you have walked until you came to this place. Yet in spite of all this, you did not trust the Lord your God. Who goes before you on your way, to seek out a place for you to make camp, in the fire by night to show you the way by which you should go, and in the cloud by day. Then the Lord heard the sound of your words, and he was angry and swore an oath, saying, Thirty-five not one of these men, this evil generation, shall see the good land which I swore to give your fathers. Except Caleb the son of Jephunneh, he shall see it, and to him I will give the land on which he has set foot, and to his sons, because he has followed the Lord fully. The Lord was angry with me also on your account, saying, not even you shall enter there. Joshua the son of Nun, who stands before you, shall himself enter there, encourage him, for he will give it to Israel as an inheritance. Moreover, your little ones who, you said, would become plunder, and your sons, who this day have no knowledge of good and evil, shall enter there, and I will give it to them and they shall take possession of it. But as for you, Turn around and set out for the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. Then you replied to me, We have sinned against the Lord, we ourselves will go up and fight, just as the Lord our God commanded us. And every man of you strapped on his weapons of war, and you viewed it as easy to go up into the hill country. But the Lord said to me, Say to them, Do not go up nor fight, for I am not among you otherwise you will be defeated by your enemies. So I spoke to you, but you would not listen. Instead, you rebelled against the command of the Lord, and acted presumptuously and went up into the hill country. And the Amorites who lived in that hill country came out against you and chased you as bees do, and they scattered you from Seir to Horma. Then you returned and wept before the Lord, but the Lord did not listen to your voice, nor pay attention to you. So you remained at Kadesh for many days, the days that you spent there. Then we turned and set out for the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea, as the Lord spoke to me, and we circled Mount Seir for many days. And the Lord spoke to me, saying, You have circled this mountain long enough. Now turn north. And command the people, saying, You are going to pass through the territory of your brothers the sons of Esau, who live in Seir, and they will be afraid of you. So be very careful. Do not provoke them, for I will not give you any of their land, not even as much as a footprint, because I have given Mount Seir to Esau as a possession. You are to buy food from them with money so that you may eat and you shall also purchase water from them with money so that you may drink. For the Lord your God has blessed you in all that you have done, he has known your wandering through this great wilderness. These forty years the Lord your God has been with you, you have not lacked anything. So we passed beyond our brothers the sons of Esau, who live in Seir, away from the Araba road, away from Elath and Ezi and Jeber. And we turned and passed through by the way of the wilderness of Moab. Then the Lord said to me, Do not attack Moab, nor provoke them to war, for I will not give you any of their land as a possession, because I have given Ar to the sons of Lot as a possession. The Emim lived there previously, a people as great, numerous, and tall as the Anakim. Like the Anakim, they too are regarded as Rephaim, but the Moabites call them Emim. The Horites previously lived in Seir, but the sons of Esau dispossessed them and destroyed them from before them, and settled in their place, just as Israel did to the land of their possession which the Lord gave them. Now arise and cross over the Wadi Zird yourselves. So we crossed over the Wadi Zird. 
Now the time that it took for us to come from Kadesh Barnea until we crossed over the Wadi Zird was thirty-eight years, until all the generation of the men of war perished from within the camp, just as the Lord had sworn to them. Indeed, the hand of the Lord was against them, to destroy them from within the camp until they all perished. So it came about, when all the men of war had finally perished from among the people, that the Lord spoke to me, saying, Today you shall cross over Ar, the border of Moab. When you come opposite the sons of Ammon, do not attack them nor provoke them, for I will not give you any of the land of the sons of Ammon as a possession, because I have given it to the sons of Lot as a possession. It is also regarded as the land of the Rephaim, because the Rephaim previously lived in it, but the Ammonites call them Zamzaman. A people as great, numerous, and tall as the Anakim, but the Lord destroyed them before them. And they dispossessed them and settled in their place. Just as he did for the sons of Esau, who live in Seir, when he destroyed the Horites from before them, they dispossessed them and settled in their place, where they remain even to this day. And as for the Avim, who lived in villages as far as Gaza, the Kaphtarim, who came from Kaphtar, destroyed them and lived in their place. Arise, set out, and pass through the valley of Arnon. Look! I have handed over to you Sion the Amorite, king of Heshbon, and his land, start taking possession and plunge into battle with him. This day I will begin to put the dread and fear of you upon the faces of people everywhere, who, when they hear the news of you, will tremble and be in anguish because of you. So I sent messengers from the wilderness of Kedemoth to Sion king of Heshbon with words of peace, saying, Let me pass through your land, I will travel only on the road. I will not turn aside to the right or to the left. You will sell me food for money so that I may eat, and give me water for money so that I may drink, only let me pass through on foot. Just as the sons of Esau who live in Seir and the Moabites who live in Ar did for me, until I cross over the Jordan into the land that the Lord our God is giving us. But Sion king of Heshbon was not willing for us to pass through his land, for the Lord your God hardened his spirit and made his heart obstinate, in order to hand him over to you, as he is today. And the Lord said to me, See, I have begun to turn Sion and his land over to you. Begin taking possession, so that you may possess his land. Then Sion came out with all his people to meet us in battle at Jehaz. And the Lord our God turned him over to us, and we defeated him with his sons and all his people. So we captured all his cities at that time and utterly destroyed the men, women, and children of every city. We left no survivor. We took only the animals as our plunder, and the spoils of the cities which we had captured. From Eroor which is on the edge of the valley of Arnon and from the city which is in the valley, even to Gilead, there was no city that was too high for us, the Lord our God turned it all over to us. Only you did not go near the land of the sons of Ammon, all along the river Jabbok and the cities of the hill country, and wherever the Lord our God had commanded us to avoid. Then we turned and went up the road to Bashan, and O.G., king of Bashan, came out with all his people to meet us in battle at Edrei. But the Lord said to me, Do not fear him, for I have handed him and all his people and his land over to you, and you shall do to him just as you did to Sion king of the Amorites, who lived in Heshbon. So the Lord our God also handed over to us O.G., king of Bashan, with all his people, and we struck them until no survivor was left. We captured all his cities at that time, there was not a city which we did not take from them, sixty cities, all the region of Argob, the kingdom of O.G. in Bashan. All these were cities fortified with high walls, gates, and bars, besides a great many unwalled towns. 
We utterly destroyed them, as we did to Sion king of Heshbon, utterly destroying the men, women, and children of every city. But all the animals and the spoils of the cities we took as our plunder. So at that time we took the land from the hand of the two kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan, from the valley of Arnon to Mount Hermon. Sidonians call Hermon Sirion, and the Amorites call it Sinir. All the cities of the plateau, all Gilead, and all Bashan, as far as Selika and Edrei, cities of the kingdom of Og in Bashan. For only Og king of Bashan was left of the remnant of the Rephaim. Behold, his bed was a bed of iron, it is in Rabbah of the sons of Ammon. Its length was nine cubits, and its width four cubits by the usual cubit. So we took possession of this land at that time. From Aror, which is by the valley of Arnon, and half the hill country of Gilead and its cities I gave to the Reubenites and to the Gadites. The rest of Gilead and all Bashan, the kingdom of Og, I gave to the half-tribe of Manasseh, all the region of Argob. As to all Bashan, it is called the land of Rephaim. Jair the son of Manasseh took all the region of Argob as far as the border of the Jeshurites and the Makathites, that is, Bashan, and named it after his own name, Havath Jair, as it is to this day. To Makir I gave Gilead. To the Reubenites and the Gadites I gave from Gilead even as far as the valley of Arnon, the middle of the valley as a border, and as far as the river Jabbok, the border of the sons of Ammon. The Arabah also, with the Jordan as a border, from Chinnereth even as far as the Sea of the Arabah, the Salt Sea, at the foot of the slopes of Pisgah on the east. Then I commanded you at that time, saying, The Lord your God has given you this land to possess it, all you valiant men shall cross over armed ahead of your brothers, the sons of Israel. 19 However, your wives, your little ones, and your livestock, I know that you have much livestock, shall remain in your cities which I have given you. Until the Lord gives rest to your fellow countrymen as to you, and they also take possession of the land which the Lord your God is giving them beyond the Jordan. Then you may return, each man to his possession which I have given you. And I commanded Joshua at that time, saying, your eyes have seen everything that the Lord your God has done to these two kings, the Lord will do the same to all the kingdoms into which you are about to cross. Do not fear them, for the Lord your God is the one fighting for you. I also pleaded with the Lord at that time, saying, Lord God, you have begun to show your servant your greatness and your strong hand, for what God is there in heaven or on earth who can do such works and mighty acts as yours? Please let me cross over and see the good land that is beyond the Jordan, that good hill country, and Lebanon. But the Lord was angry with me on your account, and would not listen to me, instead, the Lord said to me, Enough! Do not speak to me any more about this matter. Go up to the top of Pisgah and raise your eyes to the west, the north, the south, and the east, and see it with your eyes, for you shall not cross over this Jordan. But commission Joshua and encourage him and strengthen him, for he shall go across leading this people, and he will give to them, as an inheritance, the land which you will see. So we remained in the valley opposite Beth Peor. Now, Israel, listen to the statutes and the judgments which I am teaching you to perform, so that you will live and go in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. You shall not add to the word which I am commanding you, nor take away from it, so that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I am commanding you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord has done in the case of Baal Peor, for all the men who followed Baal Peor, the Lord your God has destroyed them from among you. But you who clung to the Lord your God are alive today, every one of you. See, 
I have taught you statutes and judgments just as the Lord my God commanded me, that you are to do these things in the land where you are entering to take possession of it. So keep and do them, for that is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples who will hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that has a God so near to it as is the Lord our God whenever we call on Him? Or what great nation is there that has statutes and judgments as righteous as this whole law which I am setting before you today? Only be careful for yourself and watch over your soul diligently, so that you do not forget the things which your eyes have seen and they do not depart from your heart all the days of your life but make them known to your sons and your grandsons. Remember the day you stood before the Lord your God at Horeb, when the Lord said to me, Assemble the people to me, that I may have them hear my words so that they may learn to fear me all the days that they live on the earth, and that they may teach their children. You came forward and stood at the foot of the mountain, and the mountain was burning with fire to the heart of the heavens, darkness, cloud, and thick gloom. Then the Lord spoke to you from the midst of the fire, you heard the sound of words, but you saw no form, there was only a voice. So he declared to you his covenant which he commanded you to perform, that is, the Ten Commandments, and he wrote them on two tablets of stone. The Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments, so that you would perform them in the land where you are going over to take possession of it. So be very careful yourselves, since you did not see any form on the day the Lord spoke to you at Horeb from the midst of the fire, so that you do not act corruptly and make a carved image for yourselves in the form of any figure, a representation of male or female, a representation of any animal that is on the earth, a representation of any winged bird that flies in the sky, a representation of anything that crawls on the ground, or a representation of any fish that is in the water below the earth. And be careful not to raise your eyes to heaven and look at the sun, the moon, and the stars, all the heavenly lights, and allow yourself to be drawn away and worship them and serve them things which the Lord your God has allotted to all the peoples under the whole heaven. But the Lord has taken you and brought you out of the iron furnace, from Egypt, to be a people of his own possession, as today. Now the Lord was angry with me on your account, and he swore that I would not cross the Jordan, and that I would not enter the good land which the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance. For I am going to die in this land. I am not crossing the Jordan, but you are going to cross, and you will take possession of this good land. So be careful yourselves, that you do not forget the covenant of the Lord your God which he made with you, and make for yourselves a carved image in the form of anything against which the Lord your God has commanded you. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. When you father children and have grandchildren, and you grow old in the land, and you act corruptly, and make an idol in the form of anything, and do what is evil in the sight of the Lord your God to provoke him to anger. I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you today, that you will certainly perish quickly from the land where you are going over the Jordan to take possession of it. You will not live long on it, but will be utterly destroyed. The Lord will scatter you among the peoples, and you will be left few in number among the nations where the Lord drives you. There you will serve gods, the work of human hands, wood and stone, which neither see nor hear, nor eat nor smell anything. But from there you will seek the Lord your God, and you will find him if you search for him with all your heart and all your soul. When you are in distress and all these things happen to you, in the latter days you will return to the Lord your God and listen to his voice. For the Lord your God is a compassionate God, he will not abandon you nor destroy you, nor forget the covenant with your fathers which he swore to them. Indeed, 
Ask now about the earlier days that were before your time, since the day that God created mankind on the earth, and inquire from one end of the heavens to the other. Has anything been done like this great thing, or has anything been heard like it? Has any people heard the voice of God speaking from the midst of the fire, as you have heard it, and survived? Or has a God ventured to go to take for himself a nation from within another nation by trials, by signs and wonders, by war, by a mighty hand, by an outstretched arm, and by great terrors, just as the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your eyes? You were shown these things so that you might know that the Lord, he is God, there is no other besides him. Out of the heavens he let you hear his voice to discipline you, and on earth he let you see his great fire, and you heard his words from the midst of the fire. Because he loved your fathers, he chose their descendants after them. And he personally brought you from Egypt by his great power. Driving out from before you nations greater and mightier than you, to bring you in and to give you their land as an inheritance, as it is today. Therefore know today, and take it to your heart, that the Lord, He is God in heaven above and on the earth below, there is no other. So you shall keep His statutes and His commandments which I am giving you today, so that it may go well for you and for your children after you, and that you may live long on the land which the Lord your God is giving you for all time. Then Moses set apart three cities across the Jordan to the east. For one to flee there who unintentionally killed his neighbor, without having hatred for him in time past, and by fleeing to one of these cities he might live. Bezer in the wilderness on the plateau for the Reubenites, Ramoth in Gilead for the Gadites, and Golan in Bashan for the Manassites. Now this is the law which Moses set before the sons of Israel. These are the testimonies and the statutes, and the ordinances which Moses spoke to the sons of Israel, when they came out of Egypt. Across the Jordan, in the valley opposite Beth Peor, in the land of Sion king of the Amorites who lived in Heshbon, whom Moses and the sons of Israel defeated when they came out of Egypt. And they took possession of his land and the land of O.G. king of Bashan, the two kings of the Amorites, who were across the Jordan to the east. From Aror, which is on the edge of the valley of Arnon, even as far as Mount Shaun, that is, Hermon. With all the Araba across the Jordan to the east, even as far as the Sea of the Araba, at the foot of the slopes of Pisgah. Now Moses summoned all Israel and said to them, Listen, Israel, to the statutes and ordinances which I am speaking today for you to hear, so that you may learn them and be careful to do them. To the Lord our God made a covenant with us at Horeb. The Lord did not make this covenant with our fathers, but with us, all of us who are alive here today. The Lord spoke with you face to face at the mountain from the midst of the fire. While I was standing between the Lord and you at that time, to declare to you the word of the Lord, for you were afraid because of the fire, and you did not go up on the mountain. He said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods besides me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, or any likeness of what is in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the water under the earth. You shall not worship them nor serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, inflicting the punishment of the fathers on the children, even on the third and fourth generations of those who hate me. But showing favor to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Keep the Sabbath day to treat it as holy, as the Lord your God commanded you. For six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath of the Lord your God, you shall not do any work that day, 
you or your son or your daughter, or your male slave or your female slave, or your ox, your donkey, or any of your cattle, or your resident who stays with you, so that your male slave and your female slave may rest as well as you. And you shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out of there by a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, therefore the Lord your God commanded you to celebrate the Sabbath day. Honor your father and your mother, just as the Lord your God has commanded you, so that your days may be prolonged and that it may go well for you on the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor desire your neighbor's house, his field, his male slave or his female slave, his ox, his donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. These words the Lord spoke to your whole assembly at the mountain from the midst of the fire, from the cloud, and from the thick darkness, with a great voice, and he added nothing more. He wrote them on two tablets of stone and gave them to me. And when you heard the voice from the midst of the darkness, while the mountain was burning with fire, you approached me, all the heads of your tribes and your elders. You said, Behold, the Lord our God has shown us his glory in his greatness, and we have heard his voice from the midst of the fire, we have seen today that God speaks with mankind, yet he lives. Now then, why should we die? For this great fire will consume us, if we hear the voice of the Lord our God any longer, then we will die. For who is there of humanity who has heard the voice of the living God speaking from the midst of the fire, as we have, and lived? Go near and listen to everything that the Lord our God says, then speak to us everything that the Lord our God speaks to you, and we will listen and do it. Now the Lord heard the sound of your words when you spoke to me, and the Lord said to me, I have heard the sound of the words of this people which they have spoken to you. They have done well in all that they have spoken. If only they had such a heart in them, to fear me and keep all my commandments always, so that it would go well with them and with their sons forever. Go, say to them, return to your tents. But as for you, stand here by me, that I may speak to you all the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which you shall teach them, so that they may follow them in the land which I am giving them to possess. So you shall be careful to do just as the Lord your God has commanded you, you shall not turn aside to the right or to the left. You shall walk entirely in the way which the Lord your God has commanded you, so that you may live and that it may be well for you, and that you may prolong your days in the land which you will possess. Now this is the commandment, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God has commanded me to teach you, so that you may do them in the land where you are going over to take possession of it. So that you, your son, and your grandson will fear the Lord your God, to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command you, all the days of your life, and that your days may be prolonged. Now Israel, ye shall listen and be careful to do them, so that it may go well for you and that you may increase greatly, just as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has promised you, in a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, Israel. The Lord is our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These words, which I am commanding you today, shall be on your heart. And you shall repeat them diligently to your sons and speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk on the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. You shall also tie them as a sign to your hand, and they shall be as frontlets on your forehead. You shall also write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Then it shall come about when the Lord your God brings you into the land that he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, 
and Jacob, to give you, great and splendid cities which you did not build. And houses full of all good things which you did not fill, and carved cisterns which you did not carve out, vineyards and olive trees which you did not plant, and you eat and are satisfied. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall fear only the Lord your God, and you shall worship him and swear by his name. You shall not follow other gods, any of the gods of the peoples who surround you. For the Lord your God who is in the midst of you is a jealous God, so follow him, or else the anger of the Lord your God will be kindled against you, and he will wipe you off the face of the earth. You shall not put the Lord your God to the test, as you tested him at Massa. You shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God, and his provisions and his statutes which he has commanded you. You shall do what is right and good in the sight of the Lord, so that it may go well for you and that you may go in and take possession of the good land which the Lord swore to give your fathers. By driving out all your enemies from you, as the Lord has spoken. When your son asks you in time to come, saying, What do the provisions and the statutes and the judgments mean which the Lord our God commanded you? Then you shall say to your son, We were slaves to Pharaoh in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Moreover, the Lord provided great and terrible signs and wonders before our eyes against Egypt, Pharaoh, and all his household. He brought us out of there in order to bring us in, to give us the land which he had sworn to our fathers. So the Lord commanded us to follow all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God for our own good always and for our survival, as it is today. And it will be righteousness for us if we are careful to follow all this commandment before the Lord our God, just as he commanded us. When the Lord your God brings you into the land where you are entering to take possession of it, and he drives away many nations from before you, the Hittites, the Jergeshites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than you. And when the Lord your God turns them over to you and you defeat them, you shall utterly destroy them. You shall not make a covenant with them nor be gracious to them. Furthermore, you shall not intermarry with them, you shall not give your daughters to their sons, nor shall you take their daughters for your sons. For they will turn your sons away from following me, and they will serve other gods, then the anger of the Lord will be kindled against you and he will quickly destroy you. But this is what you shall do to them, you shall tear down their altars, smash their memorial stones, cut their ashram to pieces, and burn their carved images in the fire. For you are a holy people to the Lord your God, the Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for his personal possession out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. The Lord did not make you his beloved nor choose you because you were greater in number than any of the peoples, since you were the fewest of all peoples. But because the Lord loved you and kept the oath which he swore to your forefathers, the Lord brought you out by a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of slavery, from the hand of Pharaoh king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God, who keeps his covenant and his faithfulness to a thousand generations for those who love him and keep his commandments. But he repays those who hate him to their faces, to eliminate them, he will not hesitate toward him who hates him, he will repay him to his face. Therefore, you shall keep the commandment, the statutes, and the judgments which I am commanding you today, to do them. Then it shall come about, because you listen to these judgments and keep and do them, that the Lord your God will keep his covenant with you and his faithfulness which he swore to your forefathers. And he will love you, bless you, and make you numerous, he will also bless the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your ground, your grain, your new wine, and your oil, 
the newborn of your cattle and the offspring of your flock, in the land which he swore to your forefathers to give you. You shall be blessed above all peoples, there will be no sterile male or infertile female among you or among your cattle. And the Lord will remove from you all sickness, and he will not inflict upon you any of the harmful diseases of Egypt which you have known, but he will give them to all who hate you. You shall consume all the peoples whom the Lord your God will turn over to you, your eyes shall not pity them, nor shall you serve their gods, for that would be a snare to you. If you say in your heart, These nations are greater than I, how can I dispossess them? You are not to be afraid of them, you shall remember well what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh and to all Egypt. The great trials which your eyes saw and the signs and the wonders, and the mighty hand and the outstretched arm by which the Lord your God brought you out. The Lord your God will do the same to all the peoples of whom you are afraid. Indeed, the Lord your God will send the hornet against them, until those who are left and hide themselves from you perish. You are not to be terrified of them, because the Lord your God is in your midst, a great and awesome God. And the Lord your God will drive away these nations from you little by little, you will not be able to put an end to them quickly, otherwise the wild animals would become too numerous for you. But the Lord your God will turn them over to you, and will throw them into great confusion until they are destroyed. And he will hand over their kings to you, so that you will eliminate their name from under heaven, no one will be able to stand against you until you have destroyed them. The carved images of their gods you are to burn with fire, you shall not covet the silver or the gold that is on them, nor take it for yourselves, or you will be trapped by it, for it is an abomination to the Lord your God. And you shall not bring an abomination into your house and become designated for destruction, like it, you are to utterly detest it, and you are to utterly loathe it, for it is something designated for destruction. All the commandments that I am commanding you today you shall be careful to do, so that you may live and increase, and go in and take possession of the land which the Lord swore to give to your forefathers. And you shall remember all the way which the Lord your God has led you in the wilderness these forty years, in order to humble you, putting you to the test, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you and let you go hungry, and fed you with the manna which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, in order to make you understand that man shall not live on bread alone, but man shall live on everything that comes out of the mouth of the Lord. Your clothing did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell these forty years. So you are to know in your heart that the Lord your God was disciplining you just as a man disciplines his son. Therefore, you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of streams of water, of fountains and springs, flowing out in valleys and hills. A land of wheat and barley, of vines, fig trees, and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey. A land where you will eat food without shortage, in which you will not lack anything, a land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills you can dig copper. When you have eaten and are satisfied, you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances, and his statutes which I am commanding you today. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, and you build good houses and live in them. And when your herds and your flocks increase, and your silver and gold increase, and everything that you have increases. Then your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. He who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, with its fiery serpents and scorpions, and its thirsty ground where there was no water, he who brought water for you out of the rock of flint. 
In the wilderness it was he who fed you manna which your fathers did not know, in order to humble you and in order to put you to the test, to do good for you in the end. Otherwise, you may say in your heart, My power and the strength of my hand made me this wealth. But you are to remember the Lord your God, for it is he who is giving you power to make wealth, in order to confirm his covenant which he swore to your fathers, as it is this day. And it shall come about, if you ever forget the Lord your God and follow other gods and serve and worship them, I testify against you today that you will certainly perish. Like the nations that the Lord eliminates from you, so you shall perish, because you would not listen to the voice of the Lord your God. Hear, Israel. You are crossing the Jordan today, to go in to dispossess nations greater and mightier than you, cities that are great and fortified to heaven. A people who are great and tall, the sons of the Anakim, whom you know and of whom you have heard it said, who can stand against the sons of Anak. So be aware today that it is the Lord your God who is crossing over ahead of you as a consuming fire. He will destroy them and he will subdue them before you, so that you may drive them out and eliminate them quickly, just as the Lord has spoken to you. Do not say in your heart when the Lord your God has driven them away from you, because of my righteousness the Lord has brought me in to take possession of this land. Rather, it is because of the wickedness of these nations that the Lord is dispossessing them before you. It is not because of your righteousness or the uprightness of your heart that you are going in to take possession of their land, but it is because of the wickedness of these nations that the Lord your God is driving them out from before you, and in order to confirm the oath which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Know, then, that it is not because of your righteousness that the Lord your God is giving you this good land to possess, for you are a stubborn people. Remember, do not forget how you provoked the Lord your God to anger in the wilderness, from the day that you left the land of Egypt until you arrived at this place, you have been rebellious against the Lord. Even at Horeb you provoked the Lord to anger, and the Lord was so angry with you that he would have destroyed you. When I went up to the mountain to receive the tablets of stone, the tablets of the covenant which the Lord made with you, then I remained on the mountain for forty days and nights, I neither ate bread nor drank water. The Lord gave me the two tablets of stone written by the finger of God, and on them were all the words which the Lord had spoken with you at the mountain from the midst of the fire on the day of the assembly. It came about at the end of forty days and nights that the Lord gave me the two tablets of stone, the tablets of the covenant. Then the Lord said to me, Arise, go down from here quickly, because your people, whom you brought out of Egypt, have behaved corruptly. They have quickly turned aside from the way that I commanded them, they have made a cast metal image for themselves. The Lord also said to me, I have seen this people, and indeed, it is a stubborn people. Leave me alone, that I may destroy them and wipe out their name from under heaven, and I will make of you a nation mightier and greater than they. So I turned and came down from the mountain while the mountain was burning with fire, and the two tablets of the covenant were in my two hands. And I saw that you had indeed sinned against the Lord your God. You had made for yourselves a cast metal image of a calf, you had quickly turned aside from the way that the Lord had commanded you. So I took hold of the two tablets and threw them from my two hands, and smashed them to pieces before your eyes. Then I fell down before the Lord like the first time, for forty days and nights, I neither ate bread nor drank water, because of all your sin which you had committed by doing what was evil in the sight of the Lord, to provoke him to anger. For I was afraid of the anger and the rage with which the Lord was angry with you so as to destroy you, but the Lord listened to me that time as well. The Lord was also angry enough with Aaron to destroy him, so I also prayed for Aaron at the same time. 
And I took your sinful thing which you had made, the calf, and burned it in the fire and crushed it, grinding it thoroughly until it was as fine as dust, and I threw its dust into the stream that came down from the mountain. Then at Tabra, at Massa, and at Kibroth Hadavava you kept provoking the Lord to anger. And when the Lord sent you from Kadesh Barnea, saying, Go up and take possession of the land which I have given you, you rebelled against the command of the Lord your God, you neither trusted him nor listened to his voice. You have been rebellious toward the Lord since the day I knew you. So I fell down before the Lord for the forty days and nights, which I did because the Lord said he would destroy you. And I prayed to the Lord and said, Lord God, do not destroy your people, your inheritance, whom you have redeemed through your greatness, whom you have brought out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, do not turn your attention to the stubbornness of this people, or to their wickedness, or their sin. Otherwise, the people of the land from which you brought us will say, since the Lord was not able to bring them into the land which he had promised them, and since he hated them, he has brought them out to kill them in the wilderness. Yet they are your people, and your inheritance, whom you brought out by your great power and your outstretched arm. At that time the Lord said to me, Cut out for yourself two tablets of stone like the first two, and come up to me on the mountain, and make an ark of wood for yourself. Then I will write on the tablets the words that were on the first tablets which you smashed to pieces, and you shall put them in the ark. So I made an ark of acacia wood and cut out two tablets of stone like the first two, and I went up on the mountain with the two tablets in my hand. Then he wrote on the tablets, like the first writing, the Ten Commandments which the Lord had spoken to you on the mountain from the midst of the fire on the day of the assembly, and the Lord gave them to me. Then I turned and came down from the mountain, and I put the tablets in the ark which I had made, and they are there, just as the Lord commanded me. Now the sons of Israel set out from Biroth ben Ajakin to Mozirah. There Aaron died and there he was buried, and his son Eleazar served as priest in his place. From there they set out to Gadgoda, and from Gadgoda to Jopatha, a land of streams of water. At that time the Lord singled out the tribe of Levi to carry the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, to stand before the Lord to serve him and to bless in his name, until this day. Therefore, Levi does not have a portion or inheritance with his brothers, the Lord is his inheritance, just as the Lord your God spoke to him. I, moreover, stayed on the mountain for forty days and forty nights like the first time, and the Lord listened to me that time also, the Lord was not willing to destroy you. Then the Lord said to me, Arise, proceed on your journey ahead of the people, so that they may go in and take possession of the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you, but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways and love him, and to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to keep the Lord's commandments and his statutes which I am commanding you today for your good? Behold, to the Lord your God belong heaven and the highest heavens, the earth and all that is in it. Yet the Lord set his affection on your fathers, to love them, and he chose their descendants after them, you over all the other peoples, as it is this day. So circumcise your heart, and do not stiffen your neck any longer. For the Lord your God is the God of gods and the Lord of lords, the great, the mighty, and the awesome God, who does not show partiality, nor take a bribe. He executes justice for the orphan and the widow, and shows his love for the stranger by giving him food and clothing. So show your love for the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God, you shall serve him, and cling to him, and you shall swear by his name. 
He is your glory and He is your God, who has done these great and awesome things for you which your eyes have seen. Your fathers went down to Egypt seventy persons in all, and now the Lord your God has made you as numerous as the stars of heaven. You shall therefore love the Lord your God, and always keep His directive, His statutes, His ordinances, and His commandments. Know this day that I am not speaking with your sons who have not known and who have not seen the discipline of the Lord your God, His greatness, His mighty hand, His outstretched arm, and His signs and His works which He did in the midst of Egypt to Pharaoh the king of Egypt and to all his land. And what He did to Egypt's army, to its horses and its chariots, when He made the water of the Red Sea engulf them while they were pursuing you, and the Lord completely eliminated them. And what He did to you in the wilderness, until you came to this place. And what He did to Dathan and Abram, the sons of Eliab, the son of Reuben, when the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them, their households, their tents, and every living thing that followed them, among all Israel. But your own eyes have seen all the great work of the Lord which He did. You shall therefore keep every commandment which I am commanding you today, so that you may be strong and go in and take possession of the land into which you are about to cross to possess it. And so that you may prolong your days on the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give to them and to their descendants, a land flowing with milk and honey. For the land, into which you are entering to possess it, is not like the land of Egypt from which you came, where you used to sow your seed and water it by your foot like a vegetable garden. But the land into which you are about to cross to possess it, a land of hills and valleys, drinks water from the rain of heaven. A land for which the Lord your God cares, the eyes of the Lord your God are continually on it, from the beginning even to the end of the year. And it shall come about, if you listen obediently to my commandments which I am commanding you today, to love the Lord your God and to serve Him with all your heart and all your soul. That He will provide rain for your land in its season, the early and late rain, so that you may gather your grain, your new wine, and your oil. He will also provide grass in your field for your cattle, and you will eat and be satisfied. Beware that your hearts are not easily deceived, and that you do not turn away and serve other gods, and worship them. Otherwise, the anger of the Lord will be kindled against you, and He will shut up the sky so that there will be no rain, and the ground will not yield its produce, then you will quickly perish from the good land which the Lord is giving you. You shall therefore take these words of mine to heart and to soul, and you shall tie them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets on your forehead. You shall also teach them to your sons, speaking of them when you sit in your house, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. And you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. So that your days and the days of your sons may be increased on the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give them, as long as the heavens are above the earth. For if you are careful to keep all of this commandment which I am commanding you to do, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all His ways and cling to Him. Then the Lord will dispossess all these nations from you, and you will dispossess nations greater and mightier than you. Every place on which the sole of your foot steps shall be yours, your border will be from the wilderness to Lebanon, and from the river, the river Euphrates, as far as the western sea. No one will be able to stand against you, the Lord your God will instill the dread of you and the fear of you in all the land on which you set foot, just as He has spoken to you. See, I am placing before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing, if you listen to the commandments of the Lord your God, which I am commanding you today. And the curse, if you do not listen to the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside from the way which I am commanding you today, by following other gods which you have not known.
And it shall come about, when the Lord your God brings you into the land where you are entering to possess it, that you shall place the blessing on Mount Gerizim and the curse on Mount Ebel. Are they not across the Jordan, west of the road toward the sunset, in the land of the Canaanites who live in the Arabah, opposite Gilgal, beside the oaks of Mor? For you are about to cross the Jordan to go and to take possession of the land which the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall possess it and live in it. And you shall be careful to do all the statutes and the judgments which I am placing before you today. These are the statutes and the judgments which you shall carefully follow in the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, has given you to possess as long as you live on the earth. You shall utterly destroy all the places where the nations whom you are going to dispossess serve their gods, on the high mountains, on the hills, and under every leafy tree. And you shall tear down their altars and smash their memorial stones to pieces, and burn their ashram in the fire, and cut to pieces the carved images of their gods, and you shall eliminate their name from that place. You shall not act this way toward the Lord your God. But you shall seek the Lord at the place which the Lord your God will choose from all your tribes, to establish his name there for his dwelling, and you shall come there. You shall bring there your burnt offerings, your sacrifices, your tithes, the contribution of your hand, your vowed offerings, your voluntary offerings, and the firstborn of your herd and of your flock. There you and your household shall eat before the Lord your God, and rejoice in all your undertakings in which the Lord your God has blessed you. You shall not do at all what we are doing here today, everyone doing whatever is right in his own eyes. For you have not as yet come to the resting place and the inheritance which the Lord your God is giving you. When you cross the Jordan and live in the land which the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance, and he gives you rest from all your enemies around you so that you live in security. Then it shall come about that the place in which the Lord your God will choose for his name to dwell, there you shall bring everything that I command you, your burnt offerings and your sacrifices, your tithes and the contribution of your hand, and all your choice vowed offerings which you will vow to the Lord. And you shall rejoice before the Lord your God, you and your sons and daughters, your male and female slaves, and the Levite who is within your gates, since he has no portion or inheritance with you. Be careful that you do not offer your burnt offerings in any cultic place that you see, but only in the place which the Lord chooses in one of your tribes, there you shall offer your burnt offerings, and there you shall do everything that I command you. However, you may slaughter and eat meat within any of your gates, whatever you desire, according to the blessing of the Lord your God which he has given you, the unclean and the clean alike may eat it, as the gazelle and the deer. Only you shall not eat the blood, you are to pour it out on the ground like water. You are not allowed to eat within your gates the tithe of your grain, new wine, or oil, or the firstborn of your herd or flock, or any of your vowed offerings which you vow, or your voluntary offerings, or the contribution of your hand. But you shall eat them before the Lord your God in the place which the Lord your God will choose, you and your son and daughter, and your male and female slaves, and the Levite who is within your gates, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God in all your undertakings. Be careful that you do not abandon the Levite as long as you live in your land. When the Lord your God extends your border as he has promised you, and you say, I will eat meat, because you desire to eat meat, then you may eat meat, whatever you desire. If the place where the Lord your God chooses to put his name is too far from you, then you may slaughter animals from your herd and flock which the Lord has given you, as I have commanded you, and you may eat within your gates whatever you desire. Just as a gazelle or a deer is eaten, so you may eat it, the unclean and the clean alike may eat it. Only be sure not to eat the blood, for the blood is the life, and you shall not eat the life with the flesh. 
You shall not eat it, you shall pour it out on the ground like water. You shall not eat it, so that it may go well for you and your sons after you, since you will be doing what is right in the sight of the Lord. Only your holy things which you may have and your vowed offerings, you shall take and go to the place which the Lord chooses. 27 And you shall offer your burnt offerings, the flesh and the blood, on the altar of the Lord your God, and the blood of your sacrifices shall be poured out on the altar of the Lord your God, and you shall eat the flesh. Be careful and listen to all these words which I am commanding you, so that it may go well for you and your sons after you forever, for you will be doing what is good and right in the sight of the Lord your God. When the Lord your God cuts off from you the nations which you are going in to dispossess, and you dispossess them and live in their land. Be careful that you are not ensnared to follow them, after they are destroyed from your presence, and that you do not inquire about their gods, saying, How do these nations serve their gods, that I also may do likewise? You shall not behave this way toward the Lord your God, because every abominable act which the Lord hates, they have done for their gods, for they even burn their sons and daughters in the fire for their gods. Whatever I command you, you shall be careful to do, you shall not add to nor take anything away from it. If a prophet or a dreamer of dreams arises among you and gives you a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder comes true, of which he spoke to you, saying, Let's follow other gods, whom you have not known, and let's serve them. You shall not listen to the words of that prophet or dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God is testing you to find out whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. You shall follow the Lord your God and fear Him, and you shall keep His commandments, listen to His voice, serve Him, and cling to Him. 5. But that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death, because he has spoken falsely against the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery, to drive you from the way in which the Lord your God commanded you to walk. So you shall eliminate the evil from among you. If your brother, your mother's son, or your son or daughter, or the wife you cherish, or your friend who is like your own soul, entices you secretly, saying, Let's go and serve other gods, whom neither you nor your fathers have known. Of the gods of the peoples who are around you, near you, or far from you, from one end of the earth to the other end. You shall not consent to him or listen to him, and your eye shall not pity him, nor shall you spare or conceal him. Instead, you shall most certainly kill him, your hand shall be first against him to put him to death, and afterward the hand of all the people. So you shall stone him to death, because he has attempted to drive you away from the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. Then all Israel will hear about it and be afraid, and will not do such a wicked thing among you again. If you hear in one of your cities, which the Lord your God is giving you to live in, anyone saying that. Some worthless men have gone out from among you and have seduced the inhabitants of their city, saying, Let's go and serve other gods, whom you have not known. Then you shall investigate, search out, and inquire thoroughly. And if it is true and the matter is certain that this abomination has been committed among you, you shall most certainly strike the inhabitants of that city with the edge of the sword. Utterly destroy it and all who are in it and its cattle, with the edge of the sword. Then you shall gather all its plunder into the middle of its public square, and burn the city and all its plunder with fire as a whole burnt offering to the Lord your God, and it shall be a ruin forever. It shall never be rebuilt. Nothing at all from what is designated for destruction is to cling to your hand, in order that the Lord may turn from his burning anger and show mercy to you, and have compassion on you and make you increase, just as he has sworn to your fathers. If you will listen to the voice of the Lord your God, 
keeping all his commandments which I am commanding you today, and doing what is right in the sight of the Lord your God. You are sons of the Lord your God, you shall not cut yourselves nor shave a bald spot above your forehead for the dead. For you are a holy people to the Lord your God, and the Lord has chosen you to be a people for his personal possession out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. You shall not eat any detestable thing. These are the animals that you may eat, the ox, the sheep, the goat, the deer, the gazelle, the roebuck, the wild goat, the ibex, the antelope, and the mountain sheep. And any animal that has a divided hoof and has its hoof split in two, and chews the cud, among the animals, that animal you may eat. However, you are not to eat these among the ones that chew the cud, or among those that have the hoof divided in two, the camel, the rabbit, and the rock hyrax, for though they chew the cud, they do not have a divided hoof, they are unclean to you. And the pig, because it has a divided hoof but does not chew the cud, it is unclean for you. You shall not eat any of their flesh, nor touch their carcasses. These you may eat of everything that is in the water, anything that has fins and scales you may eat. But anything that does not have fins and scales, you shall not eat, it is unclean for you. You may eat any clean bird. But these are the ones that you shall not eat, the eagle and the vulture and the buzzard, and the red kite, the falcon, and the kite in their kinds, and every raven in its kind, and the ostrich, the owl, the seagull, and the hawk in their kinds, the little owl, the great owl, the white owl, the pelican, the carrion vulture, the cormorant, the stork, and the heron in their kinds, and the hoopoe and the bat. And all the swarming insects with wings are unclean to you, they shall not be eaten. You may eat any clean bird. You shall not eat anything which dies of itself. You may give it to the stranger who is in your town, so that he may eat it, or you may sell it to a stranger, for you are a holy people to the Lord your God. You shall not boil a young goat in its mother's milk. You shall certainly tithe all the produce from what you sow, which comes from the field every year. You shall eat in the presence of the Lord your God, at the place where he chooses to establish his name, the tithe of your grain, your new wine, your oil, and the firstborn of your herd and your flock, so that you may learn to fear the Lord your God always. But if the distance is so great for you that you are not able to bring the tithe, since the place where the Lord your God chooses to set his name is too far away from you when the Lord your God blesses you, then you shall exchange it for money, and bind the money in your hand and go to the place which the Lord your God chooses. And you may spend the money on whatever your heart desires, on oxen, sheep, wine, other strong drink, or whatever your heart desires, and there you shall eat in the presence of the Lord your God and rejoice, you and your household. Also you shall not neglect the Levite who is in your town, for he has no portion or inheritance among you. At the end of every third year you shall bring out all the tithe of your produce in that year, and you shall deposit it in your town. And the Levite, because he has no portion or inheritance among you, and the stranger, the orphan, and the widow who are in your town, shall come and eat and be satisfied, in order that the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hand which you do. At the end of every seven years you shall grant a release of debts. And this is the regulation for the release of debts, every creditor is to forgive what he has loaned to his neighbor, he shall not require it of his neighbor and his brother because the Lord's release has been proclaimed. From a foreigner you may require it, but your hand shall forgive whatever of yours is with your brother. However, there will be no poor among you, since the Lord will certainly bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess. 
If only you listen obediently to the voice of the Lord your God, to follow carefully all this commandment which I am commanding you today. For the Lord your God will have blessed you just as he has promised you, and you will lend to many nations, but you will not borrow, and you will rule over many nations, but they will not rule over you. If there is a poor person among you, one of your brothers, in any of your towns in your land which the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not harden your heart, nor close your hand from your poor brother. But you shall fully open your hand to him, and generously lend him enough for his need in whatever he lacks. Be careful that there is no mean-spirited thought in your heart, such as, the seventh year, the year of release of debts, is near, and your eye is malicious toward your poor brother, and you give him nothing, then he may cry out to the Lord against you, and it will be a sin in you. You shall generously give to him, and your heart shall not be grudging when you give to him, because for this thing the Lord your God will bless you in all your work, and in all your undertakings. For the poor will not cease to exist in the land, therefore I am commanding you, saying, you shall fully open your hand to your brother, to your needy and poor in your land. If your fellow countryman, a Hebrew man or woman, is sold to you, then he shall serve you for six years, but in the seventh year you shall set him free. And when you set him free, you shall not send him away empty-handed. You shall give generously to him from your flock, your threshing floor, and from your wine vat, you shall give to him as the Lord your God has blessed you. And you are to remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God redeemed you, therefore I am commanding this of you today. But it shall come about, if he says to you, I will not leave you, because he loves you and your household, since he is doing well with you. Then ye shall take an awl and pierce it through his ear into the door, and he shall be your servant permanently. You shall also do the same to your female slave. It shall not seem difficult for you when you set him free, because he has given you six years with double the service of a hired worker, so the Lord your God will bless you in whatever you do. You shall consecrate to the Lord your God all the firstborn males that are born in your herd and in your flock. You shall not work with the firstborn of your herd, nor shear the firstborn of your flock. Twenty you and your household shall eat it every year before the Lord your God in the place which the Lord chooses. But if it has any impairment, such as a limp, or blindness, or any serious impairment, you shall not sacrifice it to the Lord your God. You shall eat it within your gates, the unclean and the clean alike may eat it, as a gazelle or a deer. Only you shall not eat its blood, you are to pour it out on the ground like water. Observe the month of Abib and celebrate the Passover to the Lord your God, for in the month of Abib the Lord your God brought you out of Egypt by night. You shall sacrifice the Passover to the Lord your God from the flock and the herd, in the place where the Lord chooses to establish his name. You shall not eat leavened bread with it, for seven days you shall eat unleavened bread with it, the bread of affliction, for you came out of the land of Egypt in a hurry, so that you will remember the day when you came out of the land of Egypt all the days of your life. For seven days no leaven shall be seen with you in your entire territory, and none of the meat which you sacrifice on the evening of the first day shall be left overnight until the morning. You are not allowed to sacrifice the Passover in any of your towns which the Lord your God is giving you. But only at the place where the Lord your God chooses to establish his name, you shall sacrifice the Passover in the evening at sunset, at the time that you came out of Egypt. You shall cook and eat it in the place which the Lord your God chooses. In the morning you are to return to your tents. For six days you shall eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day there shall be a festive assembly to the Lord your God, you shall do no work on it. You shall count seven weeks for yourself, 
you shall begin to count seven weeks from the time you begin to put the sickle to the standing grain. Then you shall celebrate the Feast of Weeks to the Lord your God with a voluntary offering of your hand in a proportional amount, which you shall give just as the Lord your God blesses you. And you shall rejoice before the Lord your God, you, your son and your daughter, and your male and female slaves, and the Levite who is in your town, and the stranger, the orphan, and the widow who are in your midst, at the place where the Lord your God chooses to establish his name. You shall also remember that you were a slave in Egypt, and you shall be careful and comply with these statutes. You shall celebrate the Feast of Booths for seven days when you have gathered in from your threshing floor and your wine vat. And you shall rejoice in your feast, you, your son and your daughter, and your male and female slaves, and the Levite, the stranger, the orphan, and the widow who are in your towns. For seven days you shall celebrate a feast to the Lord your God in the place which the Lord chooses, because the Lord your God will bless you in all your produce and in all the work of your hands, so that you will be altogether joyful. Three times a year all your males shall appear before the Lord your God at the place which he chooses, at the Feast of Unleavened Bread, at the Feast of Weeks, and at the Feast of Booths, and they are not to appear before the Lord empty-handed. Everyone shall give as he is able, in accordance with the blessing of the Lord your God which he has given you. You shall appoint for yourself judges and officers in all your towns which the Lord your God is giving you, according to your tribes, and they shall judge the people with righteous judgment. 19 You shall not distort justice, you shall not show partiality, and you shall not accept a bribe, because a bribe blinds the eyes of the wise and distorts the words of the righteous. Justice, and only justice, you shall pursue, so that you may live and possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not plant for yourself an Asherah of any kind of tree beside the altar of the Lord your God, which you shall make for yourself. And you shall not set up for yourself a memorial stone, which the Lord your God hates. You shall not sacrifice to the Lord your God an ox or a sheep which has a blemish or any defect, for that is a detestable thing to the Lord your God. If there is found in your midst, in any of your towns which the Lord your God is giving you, a man or a woman who does what is evil in the sight of the Lord your God, by violating his covenant. And that person has gone and served other gods and worshipped them, or the sun, the moon, or any of the heavenly lights, which I have commanded not to do. And if it is reported to you and you have heard about it, then you shall investigate thoroughly. And if it is true and the report is trustworthy that this detestable thing has been done in Israel, then you are to bring out to your gates that man or woman who has done this evil deed, that is, the man or the woman, and you shall stone them to death. On the testimony of two witnesses or three witnesses, the condemned shall be put to death, he shall not be put to death on the testimony of only one witness. The hands of the witnesses shall be first against him to put him to death, and afterward the hands of all the people. So you shall eliminate the evil from your midst. If a case is too difficult for you to decide, between one kind of homicide or another, between one kind of lawsuit or another, and between one kind of assault or another, that are cases of dispute in your courts, then you shall arise and go up to the place which the Lord your God chooses. So you shall come to the Levitical priests or the judge who is in office in those days, and you shall inquire of them and they will declare to you the verdict. Then you shall act in accordance with the terms of the verdict which they declare to you from that place which the Lord chooses, and you shall be careful to act in accordance with everything that they instruct you to do. In accordance with the terms of the law about which they instruct you, and in accordance with the verdict which they tell you, you shall act, you shall not turn aside from the word which they declare to you, to the right or the left. 
But the person who acts insolently by not listening to the priest who stands there to serve the Lord your God, nor to the judge, that person shall die, so you shall eliminate the evil from Israel. Then all the people will hear and be afraid, and will not act insolently again. When you enter the land which the Lord your God is giving you, and you take possession of it and live in it, and you say, I will appoint a king over me like all the nations who are around me, 15 you shall in fact appoint a king over you whom the Lord your God chooses. One from among your countrymen you shall appoint as king over yourselves, you may not put a foreigner over yourselves, anyone who is not your countryman. In any case, he is not to acquire many horses for himself, nor shall he make the people return to Egypt in order to acquire many horses, since the Lord has said to you, You shall never again return that way. And he shall not acquire many wives for himself, so that his heart does not turn away, nor shall he greatly increase silver and gold for himself. Now it shall come about, when he sits on the throne of his kingdom, that he shall write for himself a copy of this law on a scroll in the presence of the Levitical priests. And it shall be with him, and he shall read it all the days of his life, so that he will learn to fear the Lord his God, by carefully following all the words of this law and these statutes. So that his heart will not be haughty toward his countrymen, and that he will not turn away from the commandment to the right or the left, so that he and his sons may live long in his kingdom in the midst of Israel. The Levitical priests, the whole tribe of Levi, shall not have a portion or inheritance with Israel, they shall eat the Lord's offerings by fire in his property. They shall not have an inheritance among their countrymen, the Lord is their inheritance, as he promised them. Now this shall be the priest's portion from the people, from those who offer a sacrifice, either an ox or a sheep, they shall give the priest the shoulder, the two cheeks, and the stomach. You shall give him the first fruits of your grain, your new wine, and your oil, and the first fleece of your sheep. For the Lord your God has chosen him and his sons from all your tribes, to stand to serve in the name of the Lord always. Now if a Levite comes from any of your towns throughout Israel where he resides, and he comes whenever he desires to the place which the Lord chooses, then he shall serve in the name of the Lord his God, like all his fellow Levites who stand there before the Lord. They shall eat equal portions, except for what they receive from the sale of their father's estates. When you enter the land which the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to imitate the detestable things of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire, one who uses divination, a soothsayer, one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who casts a spell, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who consults the dead. For whoever does these things is detestable to the Lord, and because of these detestable things the Lord your God is going to drive them out before you. You are to be blameless before the Lord your God. For these nations, which you are going to dispossess, listen to soothsayers and diviners, but as for you, the Lord your God has not allowed you to do so. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your countrymen, to him you shall listen. This is in accordance with everything that you asked of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, saying, Do not let me hear the voice of the Lord my God again, and do not let me see this great fire any more, or I will die. And the Lord said to me, They have spoken well. I will raise up for them a prophet from among their countrymen like you, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them everything that I command him. And it shall come about that whoever does not listen to my words which he speaks in my name, I myself will require it of him. But the prophet who speaks a word presumptuously in my name, a word which I have not commanded him to speak, or which he speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. 
And if you say in your heart, How will we recognize the word which the Lord has not spoken? When the prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, and the thing does not happen or come true, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously, you are not to be afraid of him. When the Lord your God cuts off the nations whose land the Lord your God is giving you, and you dispossess them and settle in their cities and in their houses. You shall set aside for yourself three cities in the midst of your land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess. You shall prepare the roads for yourself and divide into three regions the territory of your land which the Lord your God will give you as an inheritance, so that anyone who commits manslaughter may flee there. Now this is the case of the one who commits manslaughter, who may flee there and live, when he kills his friend unintentionally, not hating him previously. As when a person goes into the forest with his friend to cut wood, and his hand swings the axe to cut down the tree, and the iron head slips off the handle and strikes his friend so that he dies, he may flee to one of these cities and live. Otherwise, the avenger of blood might pursue him in the heat of his anger, and overtake him because the way is long, and take his life, though he was not sentenced to death since he had not hated him previously. Therefore I command you, saying, You shall set aside for yourself three cities. And if the Lord your God enlarges your territory, just as he has sworn to your fathers, and gives you all the land that he promised to give your fathers. If you carefully follow all of this commandment which I am commanding you today, to love the Lord your God, and to walk in his ways always, then you shall add three more cities for yourself, besides these three. So innocent blood will not be shed in the midst of your land which the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance, and guilt for bloodshed will not be on you. But if there is a person who hates his neighbor, and waits in ambush for him and rises up against him and strikes him so that he dies, and he flees to one of these cities. Then the elders of his city shall send men and take him from there, and hand him over to the avenger of blood, so that he may die. You shall not pity him, but you shall eliminate the guilt for the bloodshed of the innocent from Israel, so that it may go well for you. You shall not displace your neighbor's boundary marker, which the ancestors have set, in your inheritance which you will inherit in the land that the Lord your God is giving you to possess. A single witness shall not rise up against a person regarding any wrongdoing or any sin that he commits, on the testimony of two or three witnesses a matter shall be confirmed. If a malicious witness rises up against a person to testify against him of wrongdoing, then both people who have the dispute shall stand before the Lord, before the priests and the judges who will be in office in those days. And the judges shall investigate thoroughly, and if the witness is a false witness and he has testified against his brother falsely, then you shall do to him just as he had planned to do to his brother. So you shall eliminate the evil from among you. And the rest of the people will hear and be afraid, and will never again do such an evil thing among you. So you shall not show pity, life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, and foot for foot. When you go out to battle against your enemies and see horses, chariots, and people more numerous than you, do not be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, who brought you up from the land of Egypt, is with you. When you are approaching the battle, the priest shall come forward and speak to the people. He shall say to them, Here, Israel, you are approaching the battle against your enemies today. Do not be faint-hearted. Do not be afraid, or panic, or be terrified by them. For the Lord your God is the one who is going with you, to fight for you against your enemies, to save you. The officers also shall speak to the people, saying, Who is the man that has built a new house but has not dedicated it? 
let him go and return to his house, otherwise he might die in the battle and another man would dedicate it. And who is the man that has planted a vineyard but has not put it to use? Let him go and return to his house, otherwise he might die in the battle and another man would put it to use. And who is the man that is betrothed to a woman and has not married her? Let him go and return to his house, otherwise he might die in the battle and another man would marry her. Then the officers shall speak further to the people and say, Who is the man that is afraid and faint-hearted? Let him go and return to his house, so that he does not make his brother's hearts melt like his heart. And when the officers have finished speaking to the people, they shall appoint commanders of armies at the head of the people. When you approach a city to fight against it, you shall offer it terms of peace. And if it agrees to make peace with you and opens to you, then all the people who are found in it shall become your forced labor and serve you. However, if it does not make peace with you, but makes war against you, then you shall besiege it. When the Lord your God gives it into your hand, you shall strike all the men in it with the edge of the sword. However, the women, the children, the animals, and everything that is in the city, all of its spoils, you shall take as plunder for yourself, and you shall use the spoils of your enemies which the Lord your God has given you. This is what you shall do to all the cities that are very far from you, which are not of the cities of these nations nearby. Only in the cities of these peoples that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance, you shall not leave anything that breathes alive. Instead, you shall utterly destroy them, the Hittite and the Amorite, the Canaanite and the Perizzite, the Hivite and the Jebusite, just as the Lord your God has commanded you. So that they will not teach you to do all the same detestable practices of theirs which they have done for their gods, by which you would sin against the Lord your God. When you besiege a city for a long time, to make war against it in order to capture it, you shall not destroy its trees by swinging an axe against them, for you may eat from them, so you shall not cut them down. For is the tree of the field a human, that it should be besieged by you? Only the trees that you know are not fruit trees you shall destroy and cut down, so that you may construct siege works against the city that is making war against you until it falls. If a person who has been killed by someone is found lying in the open country in the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess, and it is not known who struck him, then your elders and your judges shall go out and measure the distance to the cities which are around the one who was killed. And it shall be that the city which is nearest to the person killed, that is, that the elders of that city shall take a heifer of the herd that has not been worked and has not pulled in a yoke. And the elders of that city shall bring the heifer down to a valley with running water, which has not been plowed or sown, and they shall break the heifer's neck there in the valley. Then the priests, the sons of Levi, shall come forward, because the Lord your God has chosen them to serve him and to bless in the name of the Lord and every dispute and violent crime shall be settled by them. And all the elders of that city which is nearest to the person killed shall wash their hands over the heifer whose neck was broken in the valley. And they shall respond and say, Our hands did not shed this blood, nor did our eyes see who did. Forgive your people Israel whom you have redeemed, Lord, and do not place the guilt for innocent blood in the midst of your people Israel. And the guilt for bloodshed shall be forgiven them. So you shall remove the guilt for innocent blood from your midst, when you do what is right in the eyes of the Lord. When you go out to battle against your enemies, and the Lord your God hands them over to you and you take them away captive. And you see among the captives a beautiful woman, and are strongly attracted to her and would take her as a wife for yourself. Then you shall bring her into your home, and she shall shave her head and trim her nails. 
She shall also remove the clothes of her captivity and shall remain in your house, and weep for her father and mother a full month, and after that you may have relations with her and become her husband and she shall be your wife. But it shall be, if you are not pleased with her, then you shall let her go wherever she wishes, and you certainly shall not sell her for money, you shall not treat her as merchandise, since you have humiliated her. If a man has two wives, the one loved and the other unloved, and both the loved and the unloved have borne him sons, and the firstborn son belongs to the unloved. Then it shall be on the day that he wills what he owns as an inheritance to his sons, he is not allowed to treat the son of the loved wife as the firstborn, at the expense of the son of the unloved, who actually is the firstborn son. On the contrary, he shall acknowledge the firstborn, the son of the unloved wife, by giving him a double portion of everything that he owns, for he was the beginning of his strength, to him belongs the right of the firstborn. If any person has a stubborn and rebellious son who does not obey his father or his mother, and when they discipline him, he does not listen to them. Then his father and mother shall seize him, and bring him out to the elders of his city at the gateway of his hometown. And they shall say to the elders of his city, This son of ours is stubborn and rebellious, he does not obey us, he is thoughtless and given to drinking. Then all the men of his city shall stone him to death, so you shall eliminate the evil from your midst, and all Israel will hear about it and fear. Now if a person has committed a sin carrying a sentence of death and he is put to death, and you hang him on a tree. His body is not to be left overnight on the tree, but you shall certainly bury him on the same day, for he who is hanged is cursed of God, so that you do not defile your land which the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance. You shall not see your countryman's ox or his sheep straying away, and avoid them, you shall certainly bring them back to your countrymen. And if your countryman is not near you, or if you do not know him, then you shall bring it to your house, and it shall remain with you until your countryman looks for it, then you shall restore it to him. You shall also do this with his donkey, and you shall do the same with his garment, and you shall do likewise with any lost property of your countrymen, which has been lost by him and you have found. You are not allowed to avoid them. You shall not see your countryman's donkey or his ox fallen down on the road, and avoid them, you shall certainly help him raise them up. A woman shall not wear a man's clothing, nor shall a man put on a woman's clothing, for whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord your God. If you happen to come upon a bird's nest along the way, in any tree or on the ground, with young ones or eggs in it, and the mother sitting on the young or on the eggs, you shall not take the mother with the young. You shall certainly let the mother go, but the young you may take for yourself, in order that it may go well for you and that you may prolong your days. When you build a new house, you shall make a parapet for your roof, so that you will not bring guilt for bloodshed on your house if anyone falls from it. You shall not sow your vineyard with two kinds of seed, otherwise all the produce of the seed which you have sown and the yield of the vineyard will be forfeited to the sanctuary. You shall not plow with an ox and a donkey together. You shall not wear a material of wool and linen combined together. You shall make yourself tassels on the four corners of your garment with which you cover yourself. If any man takes a wife and goes into her and then turns against her, and he charges her with shameful behavior and publicly defames her, and says, I took this woman, but when I came near her, I did not find her to have evidence of virginity. Then the girl's father and her mother shall take and bring out the evidence of the girl's virginity to the elders of the city at the gate. And the girl's father shall say to the elders, I gave my daughter to this man as a wife, but he turned against her. And behold, he has charged her with shameful behavior, saying, I did not find your daughter to have evidence of virginity. 
but this is the evidence of my daughter's virginity. And they shall spread out the garment before the elders of the city. Then the elders of that city shall take the man and rebuke him. And they shall fine him a hundred shekels of silver and give it to the girl's father, because he publicly defamed a virgin of Israel. And she shall remain his wife, he is not allowed to divorce her all his days. But if this charge is true, and they did not find the girl to have evidence of virginity, then they shall bring the girl out to the doorway of her father's house, and the men of her city shall stone her to death, because she has committed a disgraceful sin in Israel by playing the prostitute in her father's house, so you shall eliminate the evil from among you. If a man is found sleeping with a married woman, then both of them shall die, the man who slept with the woman, and the woman, so you shall eliminate the evil from Israel. If there is a girl who is a virgin betrothed to a man, and another man finds her in the city and sleeps with her, then you shall bring them both out to the gate of that city and you shall stone them to death, the girl, because she did not cry out for help though she was in the city, and the man, because he has violated his neighbor's wife. So you shall eliminate the evil from among you. But if the man finds the girl who is betrothed in the field, and the man seizes her and rapes her, then only the man who raped her shall die. And you are not to do anything to the girl, there is no sin in the girl worthy of death, for just as a man rises against his neighbor and murders him, so is this case. When he found her in the field, the betrothed girl cried out, but there was no one to save her. If a man finds a girl who is a virgin, who is not betrothed, and he seizes her and has sexual relations with her, and they are discovered, then the man who had sexual relations with her shall give the girl's father fifty shekels of silver, and she shall become his wife, because he has violated her, he is not allowed to divorce her all his days. A man shall not take his father's wife in marriage, so that he does not uncover his father's garment. No one who is emasculated or has his male organ cut off may enter the assembly of the Lord. To no one of illegitimate birth may enter the assembly of the Lord, none of his descendants, even to the tenth generation, may enter the assembly of the Lord. No Ammonite or Moabite may enter the assembly of the Lord, none of their descendants, even to the tenth generation, may ever enter the assembly of the Lord. Because they did not meet you with food and water on the way when you came out of Egypt, and because they hired against you Balaam the son of Beer from Pether of Mesopotamia, to curse you. Nevertheless, the Lord your God was unwilling to listen to Balaam, but the Lord your God turned the curse into a blessing for you because the Lord your God loves you. You shall never seek their peace or their prosperity all your days. You shall not loathe an Edomite, for he is your brother, you shall not loathe an Egyptian, because you were a stranger in his land. The sons of the third generation who are born to them may enter the assembly of the Lord. When you go out as an army against your enemies, you shall be on guard against every evil thing. If there is among you any man who is unclean because of a nocturnal emission, then he must go outside the camp, he may not re-enter the camp. But when evening approaches, he shall bathe himself with water, and at sundown he may re-enter the camp. You shall also have a place allocated outside the camp, so that you may go out there to relieve yourself. And you shall have a spade among your tools, and it shall be when you sit down outside, you shall dig with it and shall turn and cover up your excrement. Since the Lord your God walks in the midst of your camp to save you and to defeat your enemies before you, your camp must be holy, so he must not see anything indecent among you or he will turn away from you. You shall not hand over to his master a slave who has escaped from his master to you. He shall live with you in your midst, in the place that he chooses in one of your towns where it pleases him, you shall not mistreat him. None of the daughters of Israel shall be a cult prostitute, 
nor shall any of the sons of Israel be a cult prostitute. You shall not bring the earnings of a prostitute or the money for a dog into the house of the Lord your God as payment for any vowed offering, because both of these are an abomination to the Lord your God. You are not to charge interest to your countrymen, interest on money, food, or anything that may be loaned on interest. You may charge interest to a foreigner, but to your countrymen you shall not charge interest, so that the Lord your God may bless you in all that you undertake in the land which you are about to enter to possess. When you make a vow to the Lord your God, you shall not delay to pay it, for the Lord your God will certainly require it of you, and it will be a sin for you. However, if you refrain from making vows, it will not be a sin for you. You shall be careful and perform what goes out of your lips, since in fact you have vowed a voluntary offering to the Lord your God, whatever you have promised. When you enter your neighbor's vineyard, you may eat grapes until you are satisfied, but you are not to put any in your basket. When you enter your neighbor's standing grain, you may pluck the heads of grain with your hand, but you are not to use a sickle on your neighbor's standing grain. When a man takes a wife and marries her, and it happens, if she finds no favor in his eyes because he has found some indecency in her, that he writes her a certificate of divorce, puts it in her hand, and sends her away from his house. And she leaves his house and goes and becomes another man's wife. And the latter husband turns against her, writes her a certificate of divorce and puts it in her hand, and sends her away from his house, or if the latter husband who took her to be his wife dies. Then her former husband who sent her away is not allowed to take her again to be his wife, after she has been defiled, for that is an abomination before the Lord, and you shall not bring sin on the land which the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance. When a man takes a new wife, he is not to go out with the army, nor be assigned any duty, he shall be free at home for one year and shall make his wife whom he has taken happy. No one shall seize a hand mill or an upper millstone as a pledge for a loan, since he would be seizing the debtor's means of life as a pledge. If someone is caught kidnapping any of his countrymen of the sons of Israel, and he treats him as merchandise and sells him, then that thief shall die, so you shall eliminate the evil from among you. Be careful about an infestation of leprosy, that you are very attentive and act in accordance with everything that the Levitical priests teach you, just as I have commanded them, you shall be careful to act. Remember what the Lord your God did to Miriam on the way as you came out of Egypt. When you make your neighbor a loan of any kind, you shall not enter his house to take his pledge. You shall stand outside, and the person to whom you are making the loan shall bring the pledge outside to you. And if he is a poor man, you shall not sleep with his pledge. When the sun goes down you shall certainly return the pledge to him, so that he may sleep in his cloak and bless you, and it will be righteousness for you before the Lord your God. You shall not exploit a hired worker who is poor and needy, whether he is one of your countrymen or one of your strangers who are in your land in your towns. You shall give him his wages on his day before the sun sets, for he is poor and sets his heart on it, so that he does not cry out against you to the Lord, and it becomes a sin in you. Fathers shall not be put to death for their sons, nor shall sons be put to death for their fathers, everyone shall be put to death for his own sin alone. You shall not pervert the justice to a stranger or an orphan, nor seize a widow's garment as a pledge. But you are to remember that you were a slave in Egypt, and that the Lord your God redeemed you from there, therefore I am commanding you to do this thing. When you reap your harvest in your field and forget a sheaf in the field, you are not to go back to get it, it shall belong to the stranger, the orphan, and to the widow, in order that the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hands. When you beat the olives off your olive tree, you are not to search through the branches again, that shall be left for the stranger, the orphan, and for the widow. 
When you gather the grapes of your vineyard, you are not to go over it again, that shall be left for the stranger, the orphan, and the widow. And you shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, therefore I am commanding you to do this thing. If there is a dispute between people and they go to court, and the judges decide their case, and they declare the righteous innocent and pronounce the wicked guilty, then it shall be if the wicked person deserves to be beaten, the judge shall then make him lie down and have him beaten in his presence with the number of lashes according to his wrongful act. He may have him beaten forty times, but not more, so that he does not have him beaten with many more lashes than these, and that your brother does not become contemptible in your eyes. You shall not muzzle the ox while it is threshing. When brothers live together, and one of them dies and has no son, the wife of the deceased shall not be married outside the family to a strange man. Her husband's brother shall have relations with her and take her to himself as his wife, and perform the duty of a husband's brother to her. It shall then be that the firstborn to whom she gives birth shall assume the name of his father's deceased brother, so that his name will not be wiped out from Israel. But if the man does not desire to take his brother's widow, then his brother's widow shall go up to the gate to the elders, and say, My husband's brother refuses to establish a name for his brother in Israel, he is not willing to perform the duty of a husband's brother to me. Then the elders of his city shall summon him and speak to him. And if he persists and says, I do not desire to take her, then his brother's widow shall come up to him in the sight of the elders, and pull his sandal off his foot and spit in his face, and she shall declare, This is what is done to the man who does not build up his brother's house. And in Israel his family shall be called by the name, the house of him whose sandal was removed. If two men, a man and his countrymen, have a fight with each other, and the wife of one comes up to save her husband from the hand of the one who is hitting him, and she reaches out with her hand and grasps that man's genitals. Then you shall cut off her hand, you shall not show pity. You shall not have in your bag differing weights, a large and a small. You shall not have in your house differing measures, a large and a small. You shall have a correct and honest weight, you shall have a correct and honest measure, so that your days may be prolonged in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. For everyone who does these things, everyone who acts unjustly is an abomination to the Lord your God. Remember what Amalek did to you on the way when you came out of Egypt. How he confronted you on the way and attacked among you all the stragglers at your rear when you were tired and weary, and he did not fear God. So it shall come about, when the Lord your God has given you rest from all your surrounding enemies in the land which the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, that you shall wipe out the mention of the name Amalek from under heaven, you must not forget. Then it shall be, when you enter the land which the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance, and you take possession of it and live in it that you shall take some of the first of all the produce of the ground which you bring in from your land that the Lord your God gives you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place where the Lord your God chooses to establish his name. And you shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, I declare today to the Lord my God that I have entered the land which the Lord swore to our fathers to give us. Then the priest shall take the basket from your hand and set it before the altar of the Lord your God. And you shall respond and say before the Lord your God, My father was a wandering Aramean, and he went down to Egypt and resided there, few in number, but there he became a great, mighty, and populous nation. And the Egyptians treated us badly and oppressed us, and imposed hard labor on us. Then we cried out to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and the Lord heard our voice and saw our wretched condition, our trouble, and our oppression. And the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand, an outstretched arm, 
and with great terror, and with signs and wonders. And he has brought us to this place, and has given us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now behold, I have brought the first of the produce of the ground which you, Lord have given me. Then you shall set it before the Lord your God, and worship before the Lord your God. And you, the Levite, and the stranger who is among you shall rejoice in all the good which the Lord your God has given you and your household. When you have finished paying all the tithe of your produce in the third year, the year of the tithe, then you shall give it to the Levite, to the stranger, to the orphan, and to the widow, so that they may eat in your towns and be satisfied. And you shall say before the Lord your God, I have removed the sacred portion from my house, and have also given it to the Levite, the stranger, the orphan, and the widow, in accordance with all your commandments which you have commanded me, I have not violated or forgotten any of your commandments. I have not eaten of it while mourning, nor have I removed any of it while I was unclean, nor offered any of it to the dead. I have listened to the voice of the Lord my God, I have acted in accordance with everything that you have commanded me. Look down from your holy dwelling place, from heaven, and bless your people Israel, and the ground which you have given us, a land flowing with milk and honey just as you swore to our fathers. This day the Lord your God commands you to perform these statutes and ordinances. Therefore you shall be careful to perform them with all your heart and with all your soul. Today you have declared the Lord to be your God, and that you will walk in His ways and keep His statutes, His commandments, and His ordinances, and listen to His voice. And the Lord has today declared you to be His people, His personal possession, just as He promised you, and that you are to keep all His commandments. And that He will put you high above all the nations which He has made, for glory, fame, and honor, and that you shall be a consecrated people to the Lord your God, just as he has spoken. Then Moses and the elders of Israel commanded the people, saying, Keep all the commandments which I am commanding you today. So it shall be on the day when you cross the Jordan to the land which the Lord your God is giving you, that you shall set up for yourself large stones and coat them with lime. And write on them all the words of this law, when you cross over, so that you may enter the land which the Lord your God is giving you, a land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of your fathers, promised you. So it shall be when you cross the Jordan, you shall set up these stones on Mount Ebel, as I am commanding you today, and you shall coat them with lime. Moreover, you shall build there an altar to the Lord your God, an altar of stones, you shall not wield an iron tool on them. You shall build the altar of the Lord your God of uncut stones, and you shall offer on it burnt offerings to the Lord your God. And you shall sacrifice peace offerings and eat there, and rejoice before the Lord your God. 8 You shall write on the stones all the words of this law very clearly. Then Moses and the Levitical priests spoke to all Israel, saying, be silent and listen, Israel. This day you have become a people for the Lord your God. So you shall obey the Lord your God, and do His commandments and His statutes which I am commanding you today. Moses also commanded the people on that day, saying, When you cross the Jordan, these tribes shall stand on Mount Gerizim to bless the people, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Joseph, and Benjamin. For the curse, these tribes shall stand on Mount Ebel, Reuben, Gad, Asher, Zebulun, Dan, and Naphtali. The Levites shall then respond and say to all the people of Israel with a loud voice, Cursed is the person who makes a carved image or cast metal image, an abomination to the Lord, the work of the hands of a craftsman, and sets it up in secret. And all the people shall reply and say, Amen. Cursed is one who treats his father or mother contemptuously. 
And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is one who displaces his neighbor's boundary marker. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is one who misleads a person who is blind on the road. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is one who distorts the justice due a stranger, an orphan, or a widow. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who sleeps with his father's wife, because he has uncovered his father's garment. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is one who has sexual intercourse with any animal. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who sleeps with his sister, the daughter of his father or of his mother. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who sleeps with his mother-in-law. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who attacks his neighbor in secret. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who accepts a bribe to attack an innocent person. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is anyone who does not fulfill the words of this law by doing them. And all the people shall say, Amen. Now it shall be, if you diligently obey the Lord your God, being careful to do all his commandments which I am commanding you today, that the Lord your God will put you high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings will come to you and reach you if you obey the Lord your God. Blessed will you be in the city, and blessed will you be in the country. Blessed will be the children of your womb, the produce of your ground, and the offspring of your animals, the newborn of your herd and the young of your flock. Blessed will be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed will you be when you come in, and blessed will you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated by you, they will go out against you one way and will flee at your presence seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing for you in your barns and in everything that you put your hand to, and he will bless you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself, as he swore to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. So all the peoples of the earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they will be afraid of you. And the Lord will give you more than enough prosperity, in the children of your womb, in the offspring of your livestock, and in the produce of your ground, in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open for you his good storehouse, the heavens, to give rain to your land in its season and to bless every work of your hand, and you will lend to many nations, but you will not borrow. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail, and you will only be above, and not be underneath, if you listen to the commandments of the Lord your God which I am commanding you today, to follow them carefully. And do not turn aside from any of the words which I am commanding you today, to the right or the left, to pursue other gods to serve them. But it shall come about, if you do not obey the Lord your God, to be careful to follow all his commandments and his statutes which I am commanding you today, that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. Cursed will you be in the city, and cursed will you be in the country. Cursed will be your basket and your kneading bowl. Cursed will be the children of your womb, the produce of your ground, the newborn of your herd, and the offspring of your flock. Cursed will you be when you come in, and cursed will you be when you go out. The Lord will send against you curses, panic, and rebuke, in everything you undertake to do, until you are destroyed and until you perish quickly, on account of the evil of your deeds, because you have abandoned me. The Lord will make the plague cling to you until he has eliminated you from the land where you are entering to take possession of it. The Lord will strike you with consumption, inflammation, fever, feverish heat, and with the sword, with blight, and with mildew, 
and they will pursue you until you perish. The heaven which is over your head shall be bronze, and the earth which is under you, iron. The Lord will make the rain of your land powder and dust, from heaven it shall come down on you until you are destroyed. The Lord will cause you to be defeated by your enemies, you will go out one way against them, but you will flee seven ways from their presence, and you will be an example of terror to all the kingdoms of the earth. Your dead bodies will serve as food for all birds of the sky and for the animals of the earth, and there will be no one to frighten them away. The Lord will strike you with the boils of Egypt and with tumors, the festering rash, and with scabies, from which you cannot be healed. The Lord will strike you with insanity, blindness, and with confusion of mind. And you will be groping about at noon, just as a person who is blind gropes in the darkness, and you will not be successful in your ways, but you will only be oppressed and robbed all the time, with no one to save you. You will betroth a woman, but another man will violate her, you will build a house, but you will not live in it, you will plant a vineyard, but you will not make use of its fruit. Your ox will be slaughtered before your eyes, but you will not eat of it, your donkey will be snatched away from you, and will not be restored to you, your sheep will be given to your enemies, and you will have no one to save you. Your sons and your daughters will be given to another people, while your eyes look on and long for them constantly, but there will be nothing you can do. A people whom you do not know will eat the produce of your ground and every product of your labor, and you will never be anything but oppressed and mistreated continually. You will also be driven insane by the sight of what you see. The Lord will strike you on the knees and thighs with severe boils from which you cannot be healed, and strike you from the sole of your foot to the top of your head. The Lord will bring you and your king, whom you appoint over you, to a nation that neither you nor your fathers have known, and there you shall serve other gods, made of wood and stone. And you will become an object of horror, a song of mockery, and an object of taunting among all the peoples where the Lord drives you. You will bring out a great amount of seed to the field, but you will gather in little, because the locust will devour it. You will plant and cultivate vineyards, but you will neither drink of the wine nor bring in the harvest, because the worm will eat it. You will have olive trees throughout your territory but you will not anoint yourself with the oil, because your olives will drop off prematurely. You will father sons and daughters but they will not remain yours, because they will go into captivity. The cricket will take possession of all your trees and the produce of your ground. The stranger who is among you will rise above you higher and higher, and you will go down lower and lower. He will lend to you, but you will not lend to him, he will be the head, and you will be the tail. So all these curses shall come upon you and pursue you and overtake you until you are destroyed, because you would not obey the Lord your God by keeping his commandments and his statutes which he commanded you. And they will become a sign and a wonder against you and your descendants forever. Since you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and a cheerful heart, in gratitude for the abundance of all things. You will serve your enemies whom the Lord will send against you, in hunger, thirst, nakedness, and devoid of all things, and he will put an iron yoke on your neck until he has destroyed you. The Lord will bring a nation against you from far away, from the end of the earth, as the eagle swoops down, a nation whose language you will not understand. A nation with a defiant attitude, who will have no respect for the old, nor show favor to the young. Furthermore, it will eat the offspring of your herd and the produce of your ground until you are destroyed, a nation that will leave you no grain, new wine, or oil, nor the newborn of your cattle or the young of your flock, until they have eliminated you. And it will besiege you in all your towns until your high and fortified walls in which you trusted come down throughout your land, 
and it will besiege you in all your towns throughout your land which the Lord your God has given you. Then you will eat the offspring of your own body, the flesh of your sons and of your daughters whom the Lord your God has given you, during the siege and the hardship by which your enemy will oppress you. The man who is refined and very delicate among you will be hostile toward his brother, toward the wife he cherishes, and toward the rest of his children who are left. So that he will not give even one of them any of the flesh of his children which he will eat, since he has nothing else left, during the siege and the hardship by which your enemy will oppress you in all your towns. The refined and delicate woman among you, who would not venture to set the sole of her foot on the ground because of her delicateness and tenderness, will be hostile toward the husband she cherishes and toward her son and daughter, and toward her afterbirth that comes from between her legs, and toward her children to whom she gives birth, because she will eat them secretly for lack of anything else, during the siege and the hardship with which your enemy will oppress you in your towns. If you are not careful to follow all the words of this law that are written in this book, to fear this honored and awesome name, the Lord your God, then the Lord will bring extraordinary plagues on you and your descendants, severe and lasting plagues, and miserable and chronic sicknesses. And he will bring back on you every disease of Egypt of which you were afraid, and they will cling to you. Also every sickness and every plague, which are not written in the book of this law, the Lord will bring on you until you are destroyed. Then you will be left few in number, whereas you were as numerous as the stars of heaven, because you did not obey the Lord your God. And it will come about that, just as the Lord rejoiced over you to be good to you, and make you numerous, so will the Lord rejoice over you to wipe you out and destroy you, and you will be torn away from the land which you are entering to possess. Furthermore, the Lord will scatter you among all the peoples, from one end of the earth to the other, and there you will serve other gods, made of wood and stone, which you and your fathers have not known. Among those nations you will find no peace, and there will be no resting place for the sole of your foot, but there the Lord will give you a trembling heart, failing of eyes, and despair of soul. So your lives will be hanging in doubt before you, and you will be terrified night and day, and have no assurance of your life. In the morning you will say, If only it were evening. And at evening you will say, If only it were morning, because of the terror of your heart which you fear, and the sight of your eyes which you will see. And the Lord will bring you back to Egypt in ships, by the way about which I said to you, you will never see it again. And there you will offer yourselves for sale to your enemies as male and female slaves, but there will be no buyer. These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the sons of Israel in the land of Moab, besides the covenant which he had made with them at Horeb. And Moses summoned all Israel and said to them, you have seen all that the Lord did before your eyes in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh and all his servants, and to all his land. The great trials which your eyes have seen, those great signs and wonders. Yet to this day the Lord has not given you a heart to know, nor eyes to see, nor ears to hear. And I have led you in the wilderness for forty years, your clothes have not worn out on you, and your sandal has not worn out on your foot. You have not eaten bread, nor have you drunk wine or other strong drink, in order that you might know that I am the Lord your God. When you reach this place, Sion the king of Heshbon and Oji the king of Bashan came out to meet us for battle, but we defeated them. And we took their land and gave it as an inheritance to the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of the Manassites. So you will keep the words of this covenant and do them, in order that you may be successful in everything that you do. You stand today, all of you, before the Lord your God, your heads, your tribes, your elders, and your officers, that is, all the men of Israel. Your little ones, your wives, 
and the stranger who is within your camps, from the one who gathers your firewood to the one who draws your water. So that you may enter into the covenant with the Lord your God, and into his oath which the Lord your God is making with you today. In order that he may establish you today as his people, and that he may be your God, just as he spoke to you and as he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now it is not with you alone that I am making this covenant and this oath. But both with those who stand here with us today in the presence of the Lord our God, and with those who are not with us here today. For you know how we lived in the land of Egypt, and how we passed through the midst of the nations through which you passed. Moreover, you have seen their abominations and their idols made of wood and stone, silver and gold, which they had with them. So that there will not be among you a man or woman, or family or tribe, whose heart turns away today from the Lord our God, to go to serve the gods of those nations, that there will not be among you a root bearing poisonous fruit and wormwood. And it shall be when he hears the words of this curse, that he will consider himself fortunate in his heart, saying, I will do well though I walk in the stubbornness of my heart in order to destroy the watered land along with the dry. The Lord will not be willing to forgive him, but rather the anger of the Lord and his wrath will burn against that person, and every curse that is written in this book will lie upon him, and the Lord will wipe out his name from under heaven. Then the Lord will single him out for disaster from all the tribes of Israel, in accordance with all the curses of the covenant which is written in this book of the law. Now the future generation, your sons who rise up after you and the foreigner who comes from a distant land, when they see the plagues of that land and the diseases with which the Lord has afflicted it, will say, All its land is brimstone and salt, burned debris, unsown and unproductive, and no grass grows on it, like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zeboim, which the Lord overthrew in his anger and in his wrath. All the nations will say, Why has the Lord done all this to this land? Why this great outburst of anger? Then people will say, It is because they abandoned the covenant of the Lord, the God of their fathers, which he made with them when he brought them out of the land of Egypt. And they went and served other gods and worshipped them, gods that they have not known and whom he had not assigned to them. Therefore, the anger of the Lord burned against that land, to bring upon it every curse which is written in this book. And the Lord uprooted them from their land in anger, fury, and in great wrath, and hurled them into another land, as it is this day. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things revealed belong to us and to our sons forever, so that we may follow all the words of this law. So it will be when all of these things have come upon you, the blessing and the curse which I have placed before you, and you call them to mind in all the nations where the Lord your God has scattered you. And you return to the Lord your God and obey him with all your heart and soul in accordance with everything that I am commanding you today, you and your sons. Then the Lord your God will restore you from captivity, and have compassion on you, and will gather you again from all the peoples where the Lord your God has scattered you. If any of your scattered countrymen are at the ends of the earth, from there the Lord your God will gather you, and from there he will bring you back. The Lord your God will bring you into the land which your fathers possessed, and you shall possess it, and he will be good to you and make you more numerous than your fathers. Moreover, the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the hearts of your descendants, to love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul, so that you may live. And the Lord your God will inflict all these curses on your enemies and on those who hate you, who persecuted you. And you will again obey the Lord, and follow all his commandments which I am commanding you today. Then the Lord your God will prosper you abundantly in every work of your hand, in the children of your womb, the offspring of your cattle, 
and in the produce of your ground, for the Lord will again rejoice over you for good, just as he rejoiced over your fathers. If you obey the Lord your God, to keep his commandments and his statutes which are written in this book of the law, if you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and soul. For this commandment which I am commanding you today is not too difficult for you, nor is it far away. It is not in heaven, that you could say, who will go up to heaven for us and get it for us, and proclaim it to us, so that we may follow it? Nor is it beyond the sea, that you could say, who will cross the sea for us and get it for us and proclaim it to us, so that we may follow it? On the contrary, the word is very near you, in your mouth and in your heart, that you may follow it. See, I have placed before you today life and happiness, and death and adversity. In that I am commanding you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in His ways and to keep His commandments, His statutes, and His judgments, so that you may live and become numerous, and that the Lord your God may bless you in the land where you are entering to take possession of it. But if your heart turns away and you will not obey, but allow yourself to be led astray and you worship other gods and serve them. I declare to you today that you will certainly perish. You will not prolong your days in the land where you are crossing the Jordan to enter and take possession of it. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today, that I have placed before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. So choose life in order that you may live, you and your descendants. By loving the Lord your God, by obeying His voice, and by holding close to Him, for this is your life and the length of your days, so that you may live in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. So Moses went and spoke these words to all Israel. And he said to them, I am 120 years old today, I am no longer able to go out and come in, and the Lord has told me, You shall not cross this Jordan. It is the Lord your God who is going to cross ahead of you, He Himself will destroy these nations before you, and you shall dispossess them. Joshua is the one who is going to cross ahead of you, just as the Lord has spoken. And the Lord will do to them just as He did to Sion and O.G., the kings of the Amorites, and to their land, when he destroyed them. The Lord will turn them over to you, and you will do to them in accordance with all the commandments which I have commanded you. Be strong and courageous, do not be afraid or in dread of them, for the Lord your God is the one who is going with you. He will not desert you or abandon you. Then Moses called to Joshua and said to him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and courageous, for you will go with this people into the land which the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them, and you will give it to them as an inheritance. And the Lord is the one who is going ahead of you, he will be with you. He will not desert you or abandon you. Do not fear and do not be dismayed. So Moses wrote this law and gave it to the priests, the sons of Levi who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, and to all the elders of Israel. Then Moses commanded them, saying, At the end of every seven years, at the time of the year of the release of debts, at the Feast of Booths. When all Israel comes to appear before the Lord your God at the place which he will choose, you shall read this law before all Israel so that they hear it. Assemble the people, the men, the women, the children, and the stranger who is in your town, so that they may hear and learn and fear the Lord your God, and be careful to follow all the words of this law. And their children, who have not known, will hear and learn to fear the Lord your God, as long as you live on the land which you are about to cross the Jordan to possess. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, the time for you to die is near, call Joshua and present yourselves at the tent of meeting, and I will commission him. So Moses and Joshua went and presented themselves at the tent of meeting. 
And the Lord appeared in the tent in a pillar of cloud, and the pillar of cloud stood at the entrance of the tent. The Lord said to Moses, Behold, you are about to lie down with your fathers, and this people will arise and play the prostitute with the foreign gods of the land into the midst of which they are going, and they will abandon me and break my covenant which I have made with them. Then my anger will be kindled against them on that day, and I will abandon them and hide my face from them, and they will be consumed, and many evils and troubles will find them, so they will say on that day, Is it not because our God is not among us that these evils have found us? But I will assuredly hide my face on that day because of all the evil that they will have done, for they will have turned away to other gods. Now then, write this song for yourselves, and teach it to the sons of Israel, put it on their lips, so that this song may be a witness for me against the sons of Israel. For when I bring them into the land flowing with milk and honey, which I swore to their fathers, and they eat and are satisfied and become prosperous, then they will turn to other gods and serve them, and spurn me and break my covenant. Then it will come about, when many evils and troubles find them, that this song will testify before them as a witness, for it shall not be forgotten from the mouth of their descendants, for I know their inclination which they are developing today, before I bring them into the land which I swore. So Moses wrote down this song on the same day, and taught it to the sons of Israel. Then he commissioned Joshua the son of Nun, and said, Be strong and courageous, for you will bring the sons of Israel into the land which I swore to them, and I will be with you. It came about, when Moses finished writing the words of this law in a book until they were complete, that Moses commanded the Levites who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, saying, Take this book of the law and place it beside the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, so that it may remain there as a witness against you. For I know your rebellion and your stubbornness, behold, as long as I have been alive with you until today, you have been rebellious against the Lord, how much more, then, after my death. Assemble to me all the elders of your tribes and your officers, that I may speak these words in their hearing and call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against them. For I know that after my death you will behave very corruptly and turn from the way which I have commanded you, and evil will confront you in the latter days, because you will do that which is evil in the sight of the Lord, provoking him to anger with the work of your hands. Then Moses spoke in the hearing of all the assembly of Israel the words of this psalm, until they were complete. Listen, you heavens, and I will speak, and let the earth hear the words of my mouth. May my teaching drip as the rain, my speech trickle as the dew, as droplets on the fresh grass, and as the showers on the vegetation. For I proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God. The Rock His work is perfect, for all His ways are just, a God of faithfulness and without injustice, righteous and just is He. They have acted corruptly against Him, they are not His children, because of their defect, but are a perverse and crooked generation. Is this what you do to the Lord, you foolish and unwise people? Is he not your Father who has purchased you? He has made you and established you. Remember the days of old, consider the years of all generations. Ask your Father and he will inform you, your elders, and they will tell you. When the Most High gave the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of mankind, he set the boundaries of the peoples according to the number of the sons of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people, Jacob is the allotment of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land, and in the howling wasteland of a wilderness, he encircled him, he cared for him, he guarded him as the apple of his eye. As an eagle stirs up its nest, and hovers over its young, he spread his wings, he caught them, he carried them on his pinions. 
The Lord alone guided him, and there was no foreign god with him. He had him ride on the high places of the earth, and he ate the produce of the field, and he had him suck honey from the rock, and oil from the flinty rock. Curds of the herd, and milk of the flock, with fat of lambs and rams, the breed of Bashan, and of goats, with the best of the wheat, and you drank wine of the blood of grapes. But Jeshurun became fat and kicked, you have become fat, thick, and obstinate, then he abandoned God who made him, and rejected the rock of his salvation. They made him jealous with strange gods, with abominations they provoked him to anger. They sacrificed to demons, who were not God, to gods whom they have not known, new gods who came lately, whom your fathers did not know. You forgot the rock who fathered you, and forgot the God who gave you birth. The Lord saw this, and spurned them because of the provocation by his sons and daughters. Twenty then he said, I will hide my face from them, I will see what their end will be, for they are a perverse generation, sons in whom there is no faithfulness. They have made me jealous with what is not God, they have provoked me to anger with their idols. So I will make them jealous with those who are not a people, I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. For a fire has flared in my anger, and it burns to the lowest part of Sheol, and devours the earth with its yield, and sets on fire the foundations of the mountains. I will add misfortunes to them, I will use up my arrows on them. They will be wasted by famine, and emaciated by plague and a bitter epidemic, and the teeth of beasts I will send against them, with the venom of crawling things of the dust. Outside the sword will make them childless, and inside, terror, both young man and virgin, the nursing child with the man of gray hair. I would have said, I will wipe them out, I will remove the mention of their name from humanity. Had I not feared the provocation by the enemy, that their adversaries would misjudge, that they would say, Our hand is triumphant, and the Lord has not performed all this. For they are a nation destitute of counsel, and there is no understanding in them. If only they were wise and they understood this, if only they would discern their future. How could one chase a thousand, and two put ten thousand to flight, unless their rock had sold them, and the Lord had given them up? Indeed, their rock is not like our rock, even our enemies themselves judge this. For their vine is from the vine of Sodom, and from the fields of Gomorrah, their grapes are grapes of poison, their clusters, bitter. Their wine is the venom of serpents, and the deadly poison of vipers. Is it not stored up with me, sealed up in my treasuries? Vengeance is mine, and retribution, in due time their foot will slip. For the day of their disaster is near, and the impending things are hurrying to them. For the Lord will vindicate his people, and will have compassion on his servants, when he sees that their strength is gone, and there is none remaining, bond or free. And he will say, Where are their gods, the rock in which they took refuge? Those who ate the fat of their sacrifices, and drank the wine of their drink offering. Let them rise up and help you, let them be your protection. See now that I, I am he, and there is no God besides me, it is I who put to death and give life. I have wounded and it is I who heal, and there is no one who can save anyone from my hand. Forty indeed, I raise my hand to heaven, and say, as I live forever. If I have sharpened my flashing sword, and my hand has taken hold of justice, I will return vengeance on my adversaries, and I will repay those who hate me. I will make my arrows drunk with blood, and my sword will devour flesh, with the blood of the slain and the captives, from the long-haired leaders of the enemy. Rejoice, ye nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants, and will return vengeance on his adversaries, 
and will atone for his land and his people. Then Moses came and spoke all the words of this song in the hearing of the people, he, with Joshua the son of Nun. When Moses had finished speaking all these words to all Israel, he said to them, Take to your heart all the words with which I am warning you today, which you will command your sons to follow carefully, all the words of this law. For it is not a trivial matter for you, indeed it is your life. And by this word you will prolong your days in the land, which you are about to cross the Jordan to possess. Now the Lord spoke to Moses that very same day, saying, Go up to this mountain of the Abram, Mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab opposite Jericho, and look at the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the sons of Israel as a possession. Then you are to die on the mountain where you ascend, and be gathered to your people, as Aaron your brother died on Mount Hor and was gathered to his people. Because you broke faith with me in the midst of the sons of Israel at the waters of Meribah Kadesh, in the wilderness of Zin, because you did not treat me as holy in the midst of the sons of Israel. For you will see the land at a distance but you will not go there, into the land which I am giving the sons of Israel. Now this is the blessing with which Moses the man of God blessed the sons of Israel before his death. He said, The Lord came from Sinai, and dawned on them from Seir, he shone from Mount Paran, and he came from the midst of myriads of holy ones, at his right hand there was flashing lightning for them. Indeed, he loves the people, all your holy ones are in your hand, and they followed in your steps, everyone takes of your words. Moses issued to us the law, a possession for the assembly of Jacob. And he was king in Jeshurun, when the heads of the people gathered, the tribes of Israel together. May Reuben live and not die, nor may his people be few. And this was regarding Judah, so he said, Hear, Lord, the voice of Judah, and bring him to his people. With his hands he contended for them, and may you be a help against his adversaries. Of Levi he said, Let your Thummim and your Urim belong to your godly man, whom you tested at Massa, with whom you contended at the waters of Meribah. Who said of his father and his mother, I did not consider them, and he did not acknowledge his brothers, nor did he regard his own sons, for they kept your word, and complied with your covenant. They will teach your ordinances to Jacob, and your law to Israel. They shall put incense before you, and hold burnt offerings on your altar. Lord, bless his strength, and accept the work of his hands, smash the hips of those who rise up against him, and those who hate him, so that they do not rise again. Of Benjamin he said, May the beloved of the Lord live in security beside him who shields him all the day long, and he lives between his shoulders. Of Joseph he said, Blessed of the Lord be his land, with the choice things of heaven, with the dew, and from the deep waters lying beneath. And with the choice yield of the sun, and the choice produce of the months. And with the best things of the ancient mountains, with the choice things of the everlasting hills, and with the choice things of the earth and its fullness, and the favor of him who dwelt in the bush. Let it come to the head of Joseph, and to the top of the head of the one who was prince among his brothers. As the firstborn of his ox, majesty is his, and his horns are the horns of the wild ox, with them he will gore the peoples all at once, to the ends of the earth. And those are the ten thousands of Ephraim, and those are the thousands of Manasseh. Of Zebulun he said, Rejoice, Zebulun, in your going out, and, Issachar, in your tents. They will call peoples to the mountain, there they will offer righteous sacrifices, for they will draw out the abundance of the seas, and the hidden treasures of the sand. Of Gad he said, Blessed is the one who enlarges Gad, he lies down as a lion, and tears the arm, also the crown of the head. 
Then he selected the choicest part for himself, for there the ruler's portion was reserved, and he came with the leaders of the people, he executed the justice of the Lord, and his ordinances with Israel. Of Dan he said, Dan is a lion's cub, he leaps out from Bashan. Of Naphtali he said, Naphtali, satisfied with favor, and full of the blessing of the Lord, take possession of the sea and the south. Of Asher he said, More blessed than sons is Asher, may he be favored by his brothers, and may he dip his foot in olive oil. Your bars will be iron and bronze, and as your days, so will your strength be. There is no one like the God of Jeshurun, who rides the heavens to your help, and the clouds in his majesty. The eternal God is a hiding place, and underneath are the everlasting arms, and he drove out the enemy from you, and said, Destroy. So Israel lives in security, the fountain of Jacob secluded, in a land of grain and new wine, his heavens also drip down dew. Blessed are you, Israel, who is like you, a people saved by the Lord, the shield of your help, and he who is the sword of your majesty. So your enemies will cringe before you, and you will trample on their high places. Now Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land, Gilead as far as Dan, and all Naphtali and the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, and all the land of Judah as far as the western sea. And the Negev and the territory in the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, as far as Zor. Then the Lord said to him, This is the land which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants, I have let you see it with your eyes, but you will not go over there. So Moses the servant of the Lord died there in the land of Moab, in accordance with the word of the Lord. And he buried him in the valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor, but no one knows his burial place to this day. Although Moses was 120 years old when he died, his eyesight was not dim, nor had his vigor left him. So the sons of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab for thirty days, then the days of weeping and mourning for Moses came to an end. Now Joshua the son of Nun was filled with the spirit of wisdom, because Moses had laid his hands on him, and the sons of Israel listened to him and did as the Lord had commanded Moses. Since that time no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. For all the signs and wonders which the Lord sent him to perform in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh, all his servants, and all his land. And for all the mighty power and all the great terror which Moses performed in the sight of all Israel.